Hey guys, welcome back to Puffalata, and welcome back to Café Enchanté. We basically just got into a huge argument with Ignis about, he was just like, oh yeah, I'm leaving, I'm never coming back. So obviously Colton is like, no the fuck you ain't, and then they're just screaming at each other, and Kororo is just in the corner reading the page that Colton had flipped to. So I think what Colton should do is probably read the book, but... They didn't tell us if she did, so let's just see if she did in the future. I don't know. Let's see. Early the next morning, we finalized everything for a bestia trip. Saikinyatara,事故や道路の工事が多いとは思ってたけど、あれ、ベスティアが関係してたんだ。でも、本当にことねまで行くの。いや、例の侵入者とかでこっちのが危ないのは分かってるけどさ。Karia came to see us off, expressing concern with Kororo safe in his arms. I responded with an awkward smile, donning the blanket that I had received from the young beastling. Right, I'll be okay, promise. I have everyone with me. You be careful too, Karia, just in case those minotaurs show up in town. Wait, is Rindo coming with us too? <laughs> Normally, I would have asked Karia to watch after the cafe for me, but there's a chance the intruder who assaulted me could come back at any time, so this time, Karia was instructed to stay at home. One of Mr. Rindo's trusted subordinates, at the not-so-gentle behest of Mazir, agreed to watch after the cafe for me. Also, it was decided that we would leave Kororo at home with Karia under the guise of a stuffed animal. Or so we'd planned. Oh no. Uh, all of a sudden, Kororo shifted his weight, leaning out of Karia's arms and dropping onto mine. Kororo? This felt awfully familiar. I tried my best to give him back, but... Ow, 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 ow! <laughs> Kororo dug his claws into my arm, seemingly unwilling to part with me. Hmm. Mr. Rindo, who is eavesdropping from the side, interjected. Th thank you. Alright, Koro, we're going. <coughs> Karya handed Koro over entirely, wrapping both hands around his plump body. さて、僕も魔獣の毛皮は身につけたし、帝から預かった通信機もバッチリ忘れ物はないかな。Transmitter? Mr. beamed with pride as he pulled the device out from his pocket, though it looked like a smartphone to me. Mr. Rindo explained how the device enabled communication between realms with GPM as the broadcast point. Also, it took photos. The entire room took interest in this device. The prototype. Um, as Mazir and others huddled close to sneak a peek at the palm-sized transmitter. <笑>まさか異世界との境界を超え会話を可能にしてしまうとはまあまだまだ試作段階で音質は悪いし通信がいきなり途切れる可能性も高いらしいけどねお前ら無駄口叩いてねえでさっさと行くぞドローミスも向
Ignis, realizing it likely wasn't worth the argument, let out a sigh in defeat. His response was as cold as I expected it to be as he squeezed the doorknob. From there, we were transported back to the unforgiving snowy world altogether. I love- Wow, did sound a little more excited for us, Drami. Whatever. Right, we're counting on you. I wasn't sure if I'd or if he had gotten over our last conversation, but Drami welcomed us at the gate entrance, awkward as ever. Without taking any detours, we proceeded straight down the guided path. Of course, with the conditions and the distance, we took occasional breaks. Soon, I began to recognize my surroundings. As we ambled down the path which led us straight to the Firewolf stronghold, we heard an electric pinging sound, one that was foreign to this frozen world and coming from Mr. Rindo's pocket. That sound, of course, was none other than... <laughs> Mikado's volume was cranked all the way up, making it so all of us could hear their playful banter. Seriously? Guess that proves it. Mikado really is a genius, doesn't he? Mikado, Jiman to Testo Dakinga Moktekinara, Honto Nikirzo. This is gonna be like a test of the battery power for this thing, I feel. <laughs> Mikado squealed, responding with energetic affirmation as our company set off again down the trail. The only thing I could think of was how different Bestia looked from day to night. Back then, the ice blocks were deep azure, but now they were close to transparent. The trek was a lengthy workout. Just as my knees began to howl in pain, we finally reached our destination. The men in our group visiting for the first time began expecting the surrounding igloos and large torches with intrigue. Hey, ほのが灯してあるのだな。炎の魔獣ってことを考えれば、それが普通なんだろうけど、氷だらけのベスティアだとなんだか不思議だよね。ひとまず私個人としては、他の縄張りに比べればいくらか暖かいですし、ありがた
All of the firewolves caught sight of Ignis, and the fires located beside their ears diminished without warning. Ignis, however, hadn't seemed to mind, and instead marched through the snow. Oi, Ojiki. Anta ni kikite koto ga Ignis grabbed the arm of the man who, just a couple days ago, delivered the earth-shattering news to him. The old man shook his hand, signaling to a worried bystander that everything was fine. Wakatta. Yeah, uncle, what the fuck? <laughs> Out of respect to Ignis's unwavering resolve, the old man nodded, obliging his resolve. He escorted our group to an empty igloo to begin the discussion. At first, we introduced ourselves. We took the time to explain to him the circumstances happening in my world. Then, Ignis's expression warped as he began to interrogate the man. After a long pause, the man nodded out of resignation. あの惨劇の最中にできたことといえば必死に逃げ延びることぐらいだったそうして我らがどうにか身を潜めている間に Ignis, reminded once again of the atrocities he had committed, uttered in silent confirmation, choosing not to erupt in rage, but to nod instead. However, we all believe this to be the story's end. Soreto. Hmm? The man, whose face sagged heavily with regret, continued to speak, pointing his nose at the ground while recounting his tale. Ignis shrugged, offering his usual response. Despite his sincerity, What's he gonna do? Shoot him? Like. <laughs> the man stood in his hesitant demeanor as Connus interjected. Then, he let his gaze wander for a moment, all of us hanging on the edge of our seats as he unraveled. いくら Ignis was asked if he had recalled any of them, though, unsurprisingly, Ignis shook his head with an inquisitive gaze. Yes, Eel, asking straightforward questions. He bowed his head deeply. All of us, including Ignis, could do nothing except wait quietly for the silence to pass. あの時のことを話すとすれば、この程度だと思うが、他に何か質問はあるだろうか? 
はいはい俺たちイグニスのその暴走本能をなんとかしたくてさ情報集めの最中なんだけど君以外にも話を聞けそうな人っているかないや皆やはり私と同じ程度のことしか。He stopped in the middle of a sentence as if something caught his eye. Yeah, so Kono Doromi ga Nanika Stil Kamoshiren. So yats mo, Sono Koro Sudeni Warera to Sekats o Tomonishi, Sono Sodo o Ikinobita Hitorida. So Reni So yats o Anotoki, Motomo Ignis Karachikai Vashonita Hazdaga. With this unexpected remark, Everyone pointed their eyes at Jami. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm not sure what I'm saying. 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 <laughs> As Jami sat there flummoxed, Mr. Rindo continued with his own question. Vinitor no Nakani, Kako, Egonis to Onaji on a boso shita kotaiwa. Tateba, Toi Senzo toka. Nanika, Kokoro Tariwa, Arimasenka. Oh, yeah, maybe Agnes is some like reincarnation or something. Senzo ka. Vinitor no Soto na Tamajua. The man closed his eyes, conveying to the group that it was our, it was time we took our leave. As soon as we exited the stronghold, Mr. Rindo pulled out his transmitter. Mikado, you can speak to me now. How did you hear about the story of Mikado? I agree. <laughs> Even though I couldn't see Dr. Mikado's face right in front of me, I could see he was frustrated, sitting cross-armed on the call. Everyone else in our group was the same, pondering with arms crossed or rubbed chins. They were all completely preoccupied with the idea of Ignis's rampage instinct. Hmm. <laughs> おれもないっすね。自称とはいえ、情報通のドローミスが言うならば望みうすでしょうね。あ、あと可能性があるのは実は気がついてないだけでベニトルっていう種族全体が実はみんな暴走できちゃうとか暴走本能そのものが Vinitorunokakseta God. The, here we go. Conspiracy theory Jenny again. But like what if his like his entire family line, like all the firewolves, were like, we need to bring back our ancestor that like killed everybody so that they can like take over the world or something. And they like forced Ignis to become that or something. I have no idea. What if everyone's lying to us? That would be so fucking crazy. I I honestly have no idea. Oh god. That's that's insane. I think I'm just like so untrusting <laughs> everyone. So whatever. That I feel like that's that could be a possibility. Kariya mo shikari da. Shikara to yu mono wa 
血に色濃く影響されるやはり何かしらの要因がビニトルという種族にあるのではないかつっても本気で心当たりなんかねえぞ死んだ親父もおふくろも普通のビニトルだったって聞いてるしよ I sat deep in thought, hoping to grasp the flicker of some great epiphany that would answer and ease all our concerns at once. But sadly, I was no expert. Truthfully, I hadn't the faintest clue what could induce a beast into rampage. From my perspective, it felt like a submission to a baser self. What's baser? I don't know. Those minotaurs we encountered had certainly given credence to the claim. So I mumbled aloud. Is there anything in the realm of simple features or qualities that makes him different? Like, what separates Ignis from other beasts? But if I were to guess, the answer was so easy to begin with, we wouldn't be in our current situation. Something that originally was a little more than a blind pitch thrown under my breath. Huh? Yeah. Oh! Everybody answered the same thing? Huh? Mazir, Mr. Rendo, and Mikado all had apparently picked up on my idea, synchronized in their declaration. Huh? The claim caused Ignis's jaw to drop as he shot a wide eyed stare back at them. Yeah, Ignis, Kimi, Ansanta, the Futuni Shokuji Stereo. お、お、お、それは今さら確認しなくても毎日のように見てることじゃねえか。確かに魔獣は本来飯がいらねえもんだけどよ。別に食ったからってどうこうねえだろ。いや、その、なんというか、その前提が間違ってるんだよ。いい
Soon after, he howled, then fell speechless. Mikado ga Ignis no ketsek sample o hoshigatte ita no mo, sore ga liyu datte yo ne. Honestly, that would have been smart if we got Ignis like blood tested, because I feel like that would say a lot, but. Come to think of it, Kororo didn't make a pass at the fish I gave him. And the most drama he ever had was on Shantae was a cup of coffee or ice cream. Yeah, why did he not say anything? Like, Drami sees him putting away all this food and he's just like, Oh, like, that's weird, but I'm just not gonna mention it? Like, bro, what? There's no fucking way that he thought that it was just a firewolf thing. He lived with the firewolves. He knows that they don't eat. My goodness. Who could have known that his eating, which to us seemed normal, had unseen consequences? How do beasts normally generate stamina then? You're saying energy doesn't matter to them, right? エネルギーというかカロリーみたいなものを持って生まれるみたいだよ。それを少しずつ消費して寿命を迎えるまで生きていくらしいんだ。I never knew that. Ignis to Yeva Shokuji. Son I made you got sweet at a kenny. I just imagine Ignis's face in the meal. Shikasi. Sasagani Shokuji got cano de Arkotoga. Boso Hondo needs Nakarito or Moenga. Ignis, on the other hand, had a peculiar reaction to this new revelation, one that was surprising in its own way. His somewhat thorny demeanor from earlier had mostly faded and was now replaced by total shock. <laughs> All of a sudden, Kororo became unsettled and started to wriggle in my arms. Hmm? What's wrong, Kororo? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> like a rubber bouncing ball, Kororo leapt from my arms. From there, he landed and hopped onto the icy ground. Huh? Oh my god, so loud. Kororo began flapping his arms around on the snow, all while calling Ignis' name. Um, can you understand him, Ignis? Oh my god, my ears! <laughs> Perhaps out of frustration with Ignis's lack of action, Kororo began to flail his arms forcefully. Then, he pointed those arms in a certain direction. Someone finally had picked up on the small creature's gestures. It wasn't Ignis, but in fact, Mr. Rindo of all people. Eh,と、もしかしてこの方向へ僕らを連れて行きたがってるとか? <laughs> Ignis pauses his sentence, shifting his eyes over to draw me with a strange look of deep concern. Uh, uh, what's over there? Uh, Where it used to be? Oh, that's right. Drami's friends and family had also been annihilated by beasts. S sorry I didn't mean to remind you of bad memories. いいんすよ。もう随分昔のことっすし、今の俺には兄貴たちがいるっす。あそこ海が近いっすから、コロロ急に泳ぎたくなっちゃったんじゃないっすかね。うっ。なんかピストコロロです。<笑><笑> Kyosamo 
Okay, thank you. I could only imagine how painful it was to return to the ruins of your fallen kin. Drami ran back to the Firewolf stronghold with his eyes pointed at the snowy boulders. Drami. Yes, you're right. I wouldn't want to show him any disrespect. I picked Kororo up and plowed my feet through the plushy snow towards the sea to where Kororo was inexplicably drawn. And we're gonna stop here to the sound of crashing waves. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I never realized that they didn't eat. Like that's a huge problem. Uh, maybe. Oh God, maybe Ignis is like not supposed to eat or something. I don't know. There's so many things. There's so many ways that this could go. And I'm really curious to go to where Drami used to live because. I wonder if we can find something like about like him there, you know? I'm more curious about Drami at this point than I am about- Like obviously Ignis is the main plot point, but Drami has like been so- I don't- I don't know. There's just something about him that I, I feel is so weird. Ugh. I'm gonna say this every episode at this rate. Anyways, next episode, we're gonna go swimming with Kororo. Woohoo!